ಕೇಳಿ Good morning. <laughs> Sorry, I had a little sneezing fit there. Just give me a second. All right. <coughs> well, welcome to Northmont. <laughs> Thank you so much for... <coughs> well, hold on. <coughs> the choir's just coming in. That'll give me a minute. Okay. <laughs> Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Uh, just a couple of things uh, for you to know as we begin. Um, in, your, in your bulletins, uh, there's our... That's a bark, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> just not hearing things. <laughs> so you'll notice that your first, the first hymn for this morning is in Sing the Faith. So that's the first thing to know. But um, you're in luck because we'll be singing that round not once. No, no. You deserve more. Not twice, but three times. So, we'll be singing that round three times in the beginning. Now, um, as you saw here in the beginning, sometimes you just need a moment. You ever felt like you just need a moment? This morning, 
you get lots of moments. And just like our opening hymn, you don't get one moment. You don't get two moments. You get three moments. Wow. Or, ooh, I like that. Ooh. <laughs> we'll see if you're saying ooh by the third moment. Okay, so I have three moments. Session, stewardship, and mission. Whoever runs up here fastest gets to be the first one. <laughs> I'll go with Mark because he's already moving. Uh, right. <laughs> for our moment for stewardship, the magnificent. I'm breaking my moment into two moments. Oh, many moments. For today. So the first one is uh, just a real heads up. We'll be sending out third quarter statements. This is not a bill. This is just an update of what you have done as far as giving throughout the year and a reminder if you had turned in one of your cards, um, what that what that commitment card said. So just kind of helping you stay on track for, for what you had said that you thought you could do this year for the church financially and what you have been able to do so far so you don't have to go back and look through all of your check receipts. So that's the first one. The second one is if you haven't already picked it up, there are envelopes in the back as far as stewardship goes. It is stewardship time, right? That's how we figure out over the next few months. We talk to you a little bit about what it means to make a financial commitment to the church, what God is hopefully asking us to do, how he's speaking to us. But we have an introductory letter. It's in the back in the narthex. If you haven't picked it up, please grab it on the way out. I'll have somebody take it down to uh, fellowship time. So it's down there. Save us the 50 cents. We're all kind of cheap in stewardship and finance committee. Save us the 50 cents and grab that so we don't have to mail it out. One thing that I want to highlight from that letter is we have a, a fairly long passage that we're talking about during this stewardship campaign. Uh, it, it, is, it is listed in the letter, but it's 2 Corinthians 8.8 8 through 9.15. And it would be great if everybody can make sure that they read that, maybe read it a couple of times, thought about what it means to you, think about what it means to the church. It's a, it's a wonderful story, it's a wonderful part of that letter, and I hope that everybody uh, gets into that. We'll be sending you more letters and doing some more uh, moments over the next couple of, of weeks. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Ted, I see Ted, there he goes, he's ready. Born ready, Ted Mills, all right. Mr. Speaker, I cede my time to the... <laughs> uh, this is the, uh, the monthly word from Session, giving you an update. Uh, session expressed its sorrow at the last meeting over the passing of Reverend Chim Quenger of our partner church in Mal Mangochi, Malawi, and we've communicated Northmont's sympathy and condolences to them. Session discuss, discussed advancing the Northmont spiritual plan with specific con conversation regarding what is being called the Lewis and Clark Initiative. The idea is to conduct outreach into the community with an initial objective of learning what unresolved needs are being faced by the community upon which Northmont might focus. A motion was passed by session to require review and as necessary updating of all of Northmont's policies and procedures at least every three years to ensure that they're current. Session approved a youth group fall retreat at Seneca Hills for November 16th through 18th. You've heard about that uh, already from Stephanie. This, uh, this will be a five church event with the 319 churches participating along with Tarentum and Oakmont. And Session also approved a youth fundraiser to sell boxes of greeting cards. Facilities management reported that recent roof leaks have been fixed and additional re related repairs are underway. The mission committee reported that 26 international partnership visits, visitors from Malawi and South Sudan will be in the U.S. from October 10th to the 23rd. Northmont will be hosting one of these visitors, Davy Kasanthula from Mangochi. One family so far has been kind enough to have volunteered to help, and we still need one more volunteer host family from the congregation. Please. <laughs> The plan is for Davy to join us in worship on October 14th and 21st. Worship of Music has received requests from the congregation to consider monthly communion. 
additional uh, help would be needed to support the extra work involved, but things are looking positive at this point for them making such a change. You'll hear more in the future on that. The Worship and Music, Music Committee also has scheduled the Tazay service for Advent to be on Thursday, December 20th at 7 p.m. So that'll be a Thursday, not during the Sunday service. The nominating committee is beginning its work to fill slots for the governing, governing and leadership bodies with openings on deacons posing the greatest need. Anyone interested in getting involved on deacons or any of the other committees, please either see Ben or the nominating committee. The Memorial Committee reported that thanks to generous donations made on behalf of two deceased members, the handbells have been refurbished for the first time in 20 plus years. So that's why David has a big smile on his face. <laughs> the Stewardship and Finance provided clarification for the continued deficit for 2018 that you see reflected in the bulletin. Of course, we never want to run a deficit, but the good news is that year-to-date deficit is less than what was projected uh, when the year's faith budget was established. And if we were on budget with pledged offerings, we would erase nearly two-thirds of that def deficit. And furthermore, we will get a regular dis distribution from the endowment next month, which will, uh, would close the rest of the gap. Additional good news is that the endowment fund is in good shape and uh, it was also noted that large gifts generously given to the church by members generally go to the endowment fund or to specific uh, purposes and not to, uh, toward reducing the, the annual deficit. So as always, uh, these highlights will be in the book in the back of the church if you want to review them or you can always talk with me further about them. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. And as we are about to hear from our mission update, uh, just the, the Lewis and Clark thing he was talking about, that's an initiative of ours to say, we're not sure what the community needs. We're not gonna assume that we know. So let's have a group of people go out and visit the police departments and um, childcare centers and um, the schools and um, counseling centers and say, what do you think is lacking? What do we need here in McCandless and in the greater North Hills area that we specifically can do? We'll do what's needed, not assume it. So it's, it's just trying to use a different model. The second one was the Tizay services. Um, what, I, what we found was just the reasoning behind them not being on Sunday morning is what we found is that there, um, there's, for some people, that, that you really love them, and for some people, um, less. And so... <laughs> We, what we wanted to do was make sure that, that we were still having them, but that if, if it wasn't something that felt like it was worshipful to you, that it could be on a day that wasn't Sunday morning, but we could still have them. And we decided to do them during Advent, so December 20th, is that right? Thank you. And then uh, we'll have one in um, during Lent. Okay? That's the reasoning behind that. Okay, go. Good morning, everyone. Uh, just a reminder, we're going to be starting Operation Christmas Child. The uh, mission committee decided to do it a little bit earlier so you all have time to shop. And we'll be handling, handing boxes out in two weeks. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Operation Christmas Child, uh, it is a relief organization run by the Samaritan's Purse International Relief Organization, and they hand out shoe boxes to uh, different, all over the world, different countries and they, there's a religious um, message, a, a class they take called The Greatest Journey. So they learn about God, and the plan is for the children to take the box home to their family and to share the good word uh, with their family, their younger siblings and grandparents and parents, and get them to all to follow Christ and, uh, you know, all the... Uh, wonderful benefits of that going to their church and everything. So um, this year, there'll be another $9 requested donation, put in the envelopes, mark them for the children. But there's all kinds of good items you can get at the uh, Target or uh, dollar stores to fill up the box. Usually what's requested, uh, no liquid items, but uh, personal hygiene, like toothbrushes, no toothpaste though, please. Uh, they will remove them. Um, bar soap, washcloths, uh, toys, of course, and um, uh, a lot of educational stuff, for, like school supplies. That's what's really needed for the um, children. Uh, no candy also. We're gonna have a list in the bulletin of things that are recommended and also items that they do not want. They will be removed from the boxes. They do check them because they gotta go through customs. So we'd appreciate it. Uh, the collection this year is not gonna be until 
here until November 11th. Uh, everything has to be over at Elf and Wild on the 18th, that last Sunday, and they ship them from there. So just gives you time to get some shopping done, and like a reminder, we'll be handing boxes out in two weeks and probably the week after that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so just two other things before we begin. Uh, first, I wanted to thank um, uh, Leslie and everyone for the AED training. You now have uh, many more people who are uh, uh, CPR ready uh, and AED trained. And so we are very thankful for that. Also, uh, if you or someone you know, um, probably someone you know, probably not you, uh, would, uh, would be interested in working for the, ch uh, the Child Development Center downstairs. Uh, they are in need of a, f a couple of folks. They've been looking for a while. Uh, and so if you have someone in your family or a friend or uh, someone who's maybe in school, uh, but uh, someone who can uh, devote a, a full-time or part-time job, um, if, if you know someone who might fit that bill, who has some uh, child care experience uh, and who has a high school education, uh, we would uh, love to, to talk with them. So if, if you know someone, please let me know or email the, uh, you can email the, the Child Care Center directly, uh, but we, uh, we are certainly in need of people who can work down there and who are qualified. So if you know anyone, uh, please let me know. I thank you ahead of time. And now our moments are over. I'm sorry. There'll be more moments later. Please rise and meet and greet with one another.
Good morning. Please rise and join in the call to worship. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Come, let us worship the Lord. Please join me in the prayer of invocation. You are great, O Lord, and greatly to be praised. Great is your power, and your wisdom is infinite. We praise you without ceasing. You call us to delight in your praise, for you have made us for yourself, and our hearts find no rest until we rest in you, to whom with the Father and the Holy Spirit all glory, praise, and honor be ascribed both now and forevermore. Amen. shown us, O God, what is good and what you require of us, to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you. In confession, we do just that. We do so now together and then silently in our hearts. We hang our heads in the sorrow of our transgressions, lift our eyes to the hills that we might see from where our help will come. We are enveloped in our doubts and fears, tossed about by the slightest winds. God will not let our feet be moved. God, our keeper, will never rest. As we wonder and struggle, we fail to look for the signs of God's presence. The Lord will keep our going out and coming in from this time on and forevermore. Amen. As far as the east is from the west, so shall God separate our transgressions from us. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Oh, and Sally just had a birthday this week, so you should tell her happy birthday sometime. Right? It was this week, right? Was it last week? Okay, I'm sorry. So let me ask you a question. Ready? Ready? I know, it's weird that I ask you a question. Sorry, I'm hearing something. Okay. Um, do any of you wish that you were asleep right now? Okay, honesty, I like it. Two, two of you, you're fine. Anybody else? You can be honest. Okay, like everybody, it's weird that it's the people closest to me that want to be asleep more. That's a little strange. Okay, so uh, yeah, I could go for an extra six hours or so of sleep. You hate sleep? Okay, no sleep for you. Okay, I'll sleep for you. Okay, so t today's passage is actually a psalm. You ever heard of psalms? You're probably heard of the 23rd psalm, right? There's a lot of them. And they talk about all sorts of stuff. Some of them, um, the, the people who are writing them are super happy. Sometimes they're super sad. Sometimes they're just mad. They're just, Ugh, God, what's happening? Like they're just Ugh, people who are, and we feel all those things, right? What I love about the Psalms is that they kind of show us who we are, right? Because we're all those things. Sometimes we're happy, sometimes we're sad, sometimes we're angry, sometimes we want to be asleep. Sometimes we just feel normal, kind of in the middle, right? So today's psalm is one where we're, we're searching for something. We need something. We don't feel quite right. There's something out there that would help us. And we're looking around for it. And we find it in a familiar place. You're going to be shocked. Sally, let me see your shocked face. That's your shocked face? Perfect. Shocked. We find it in God. What? Yes, in God. That's where the story goes. The story goes, you can find the thing that you need in God. Now, I asked you a minute ago, do you like sleeping? Can you, how many people are you helping when you're sleeping? Well, that's a good question because when Liam is sleeping, he's kind of helping me a little bit sometimes. I hate to say that in front of all of you, but I think you know what I'm saying. Sometimes a child sleeping helps you, but it's hard to really to do anything for anybody when you're sleeping, right? And in this story, it says, don't worry. You don't have to worry because think about this. Think about you're going home. It's late at night. and You're going home from something from Kennywood, we'll say. And you fall asleep in the car. Can you imagine that? You're driving home and you fall asleep in the car. Would you hope that whoever's driving would also fall asleep? No, that would be bad, right? That seems like not a helpful thing. Okay, so what this story is saying is, Sally, don't worry about it, kid. I am not going to fall asleep on the way home from Kennywood. You don't have to worry. You go ahead and do your thing. I've got this. Yes. So that's what this, this psalm says about God. I've got this, and you're okay. So I don't know where you're scooting to, but let me pray before you scoot out of here. Okay. Are you ready? God, in every moment, we are in need, and we are trying to figure out what to do. And we are thankful that each and every day, we know that you are not falling asleep on the, at the wheel coming home from Kennywood. You are the one who will always be awake and alive in our lives, showing us what to do and giving us what we need. And we thank you. And we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Get out of here. <laughs> Uh, 
first reading this morning is from the second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 14, through chapter 4, verse 2. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable, convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. Our second reading for this morning comes to us from the Psalms, as I mentioned a moment ago. This from Psalm 121. If you are reading in your pew Bibles, it is on page uh, 571. And I'm going to read the, the superscription as well. <clears throat> Psalm 121. Assurance of God's protection. A song of ascents. I lift up my eyes to the hills from where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He will keep you and he will not slumber. He keeps Israel with neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper, the keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep you your going out and your coming in from this time and forevermore. My friends, these two are God's words for us this morning. Let us pray together. God, we ask that as we approach your word once more, as we consider the words of Timothy and from the psalmist. We ask that you would allow us to see what you need us to see, hear what you need us to hear, and that anything that comes from my mouth that is not of you, that it would be forgotten. We ask that you would show us your ways. And we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. So in my experience in church work, there's always something special, I think, about, and, and kind of exciting, when you think about getting to know a new area. I didn't know the North Hills very well. I'm still getting to know them a little bit. Um, but in order to do so, it takes some time. And so you start with the things that are right around you. You know, you start with the church and the area right around it, and okay, I know where Sheets is, and I know where that is, and okay. But at some point, you need to look a little bit closer. You need, to, you need to examine where you are in a different way. And I've always said that you can't really know a place unless you've walked it. And that's difficult on Perry Highway. And it's difficult on McKnight Road. And so I've done that a little bit in parts, trying to, to walk a place. And the reason that I say that is, I think that you see a place differently when you're walking it than when you're just driving by it. When you're going 40 miles an hour and you're worried about traffic and this bozo who's cutting me off or whatever, you're not really seeing things with the clarity that you need to. And I've noticed that when I walk a place, I naturally slow down and I notice things that I did, just didn't notice before. And, and I always find that interesting because it's it's the, the details that make a place what it is. Maybe it's a store, maybe it's a house, maybe it's just, just the way the neighborhood looks. I, I, there are things I miss if I'm not walking it. 
But again, it's hard in a place that's not exactly pedestrian friendly. But I, I always think that it's a good way of starting, starting to digest where you are and understand the people around you. And we've been involved in this series now for a few weeks of this Getting to Know You series. And if you notice in your bulletin at the bottom, it's uh, that this offering is from Peggy Meister. And she wanted to make sure that this was one of the sermons that we had for this week because um, this passage gave her confidence in her many college challenges. And I don't, of course, know what those college challenges were, but I can imagine, given that I had college challenges. And I've always thought that it's hard as you're trying to not only match up what someone's asking for, uh, it's especially hard to do that in a sermon about the Psalms, at least for me. The Psalms are always a challenge for me to preach. And a lot of it is because of, of the way that I preach. I, as you know, I'm someone who needs context. I need to open up the world that the, the psalm is, or the passage is, is written in, right? And if I can't do that, I feel like I'm, you're not getting the full story. And so this is a, not only a psalm, which doesn't offer a ton of context, but also is a very short psalm. So even the language doesn't give you a whole lot to work with in terms of understanding what's happening. Now, this is a classic hymn, it's, a, it's an inspiring hymn, it's beautifully written, and all of the things that it, it, it conjures up, it does so in just eight verses. Psalm 23 is six verses, this is just two, two more verses. And so I was digging into, well, how, how can I open up the world of this psalm to you, and not just talk about its contents? And luckily, and the reason I... I read the superscription a moment ago, that, that little bit that's at the top that we kind of go by really quickly. Luckily, that superscription was able to give me a little bit into that world. So a lot of Psalms have these. If you notice when you're reading them, uh, sometimes like Psalm 122, it'll say uh, a song of praise and prayer in Jerusalem, a song of sense and a psalm of David, right? So a lot of them have sort of, they give you a little bit, at least to, to say, this is what this is for. It's from David, or it's for the music director, all right? So it, it gives you some idea of why it's written. But in this particular instance, this is a song of a sense. If I'm honest with you, I didn't know what that meant. I think I assumed I knew what that meant, like, well, it's, you know, praising. It's going up to God somewhere. Hi, buddy. It's like that. But I did a little research, and I found out things that I didn't really know. Now, first, I think it's important for me to give you the reminder that this is a song. Realistically, I shouldn't be reading this to you. They should be singing it for you. I'm not going to sing it for you now, in case you were hoping... And if you were cringing, you're fine. Don't worry about it. But it's, it's meant to be heard in that way. It has, there's an acoustic to it. You're supposed to feel it in your soul. And it's written that way. It's written so that the words would touch you on in a different way than just speaking it can. <clears throat> Excuse me. I remember in high school, we had this, I don't know why we did this like this, but we would just read Shakespeare like the, the teacher would assign, just read this passage. And of course, one, I, I, the these and the vowels and the, like, I can't read that very well. I don't get anything of it. And it's just words on a page. Well, what am I going to do with that? That's not the way Shakespeare is meant to be absorbed. It's meant for us to see it, to experience it, to, to watch other people laugh and cry and die sometimes. It's meant for that. And if you're not seeing that, experiencing Shakespeare in that way, then you're missing a whole part of it, which is unfortunate. The words are still beautiful, but you have to do a lot more of the work. Second, it's not just a song, but it's a song of a sense, of ascending. And I looked it up. The, the Hebrew word for to ascend is aliyah. Now, aliyah is used in scripture, in, or at least in religious context, <coughs> in three different and important ways. So one, 
one ascends to heaven. Okay, it's used in that religious context in that sense. Aliyah to heaven. Okay, so it's used in that. Second, it's the privilege of being called up to read the Torah in the synagogue. So you have ascended to reading this morning. So it's the honor of being allowed to come up to the front of a synagogue and read the Torah. That's another way it's used. The third way is the way that we'll be focusing on this morning. Something called the Aliyat Regel. Now this translates to the foot pilgrimage. Put in other words, you ascend in a pilgrimage walk. So one goes to Jerusalem, or at least is called to go to Jerusalem, on a pilgrimage at three different times of the year. For Passover, for Pentecost, and for the Festival of Tabernacles. Now, we can think about that pilgrimage in the, through the lens of Jesus, if we'd like to. Remember, he's the kid that got lost and his parents uh, forgot him for three days, because that happens. And um, they went back and he's learning in the synagogue, right? It's one of those pilgrimages. Okay. So there is a collection that this psalm is in. It's in a collection of psalms from 120 to 134. And they're all designated as songs of ascent. What does that mean? They were songs that were sung. You can imagine a group of us all from over from here. So McCandless is going to take a pilgrimage over to Jerusalem. Okay? A group of us are going to go. Because, of course, it's safer to travel in a group. Which is how Jesus got lost. I was making fun of Mary and Joseph. But they're in a group, big group of people. I guess it happens. So we're in a pack of people traveling to Jerusalem because it's one of these festivals. And we get bored because our iPhone died, so we need something to do. And so we sing these songs, these songs of ascent. They are meant for pilgrimages. They're meant to sing as you walk. And the reason they're called ascent is because Jerusalem is on a big hill among a lot of other hills. So you're literally ascending to Jerusalem on a foot pilgrimage and you're singing this song. That adds more context for me than originally. The, the story itself, the, one, the, the psalm is important, but when I can imagine myself walking to Jerusalem on foot with those I love for Passover, and I'm singing this song about well, where does my help come? It comes from the hills. It comes from the God. I can get into that. I can do something with that. That makes sense to me. They were climbing the hills of Jerusalem to seek where their help would come. And for me to be able to imagine that place and how our ancestors of faith used this psalm, it opens up this image, this world that I was trying to get into in a different way. A psalm that sings of our confidence in God's presence is perfect for this long journey and this pilgrimage. As I make my way to that holy city, I can start to see this chapter open up to me as you look verse by verse. I make my way to the holy city, walking on rocky ground, and I know from this psalm that my foot will not slip. When I Make my camp for the night in the wilderness. It's all desert around Jerusalem, right? As I make my camp in the wilderness and I will try to get to sleep, I know that God will not slumber. God is my shade, protection from the hot desert sun. You can imagine walking all that way from wherever you're trying to walk to, getting to Jerusalem, and God will be that shade by day and from the moon at night. And then, of course, I paused. Well, why do I need shade from the moon? Am I afraid of moon burn? No. What were they afraid of? They were afraid of robbers. Because you're sleeping at night. If the moon is bright, you're a sitting duck. So they're afraid to go to sleep. 
God will be my shade at night to ensure my safety. The Lord will keep me from harm on my way to the festival and on my way back so that I might worship the Lord again in my hometown. And I think this is a, a, a section of Scripture that can be difficult for us to get our head around sometimes. Because when you start to read the details, it gets hard. Because this is telling me that God will always protect me from harm. That sounds nice. That sounds good. I like it. But you and I know that's not always the life that I live. Because then it starts, you start to ask yourself some of these questions. Where is God when my foot slips? Where is God when I have no shade at my right hand? Or anywhere else for that matter. Where is God when I am harmed? Or when someone I love is harmed? Bill Cosby this week was sentenced to prison for sexual assault. I never thought that I would say that. And a nominee for the Supreme Court is accused of the same thing. And we have, in this state, we had over 300 priests in Pennsylvania who have been accused of assaulting more than 1,000 children over the last several decades. And we can't sing, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, without taking some level of responsibility for that. That I am responsible. I'm clergy. I'm responsible. I may not have been the person who did it, but that doesn't mean that I don't have responsibility. So how do we sing this song with any sort of confidence? I lift my eyes up to the hills, and where does my help come from? Well, that's a good question. Well, first, I don't think that God is slumbering or sleeping. I think that God is watching very carefully how we respond. I think that God is very much awake. I believe that God is waiting for us to also be awake. I wonder if this psalm is asking me, how are you slumbering? How are you sleeping as the world crumbles? I think that God waits I think that God whispers, I think that God yells, I think that God screams for the church to be awake and to have a response. To stop assuming that, well, someone else will solve it. The government will figure it out. We have a pilgrimage to take, my friends. As a society, as a church, and as individual human beings, we must learn to walk in the shoes of other people. Otherwise, why on earth would anyone trust the church again? Why would they come through those doors? I have confidence in who God is. And I have confidence in what God can do. But if I'm honest, I don't always have confidence that we are willing to respond faithfully, that I am willing to respond faithfully. Because it's too messy. Because it's too hard. Because it's too much. In a moment, right? Great. In a moment, we're going to hear this psalm the way it was originally intended. Sung. And in Hebrew. So I would encourage you to read along in your Bibles on page 5, whatever that was. 571. Read along as it's being played. And my prayer for us is that we would reflect on our role in the restoration of what we find broken. That we would recall the moments that we let slip by and slip away where we could have spoken up or chosen to act. That we reflect on times that we were ashamed to, to speak or to, to speak up for other people. Because I think that God waits our song and awaits our journey through the hills. And of that I am confident. 
And to God be the glory. Amen. Step out of your Please stand with me, my friends. As we say what it is that we believe, this morning using a portion of the brief statement of faith. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father. In sovereign love, God created the world good and makes everyone equally in God's image male and female, of every race and people, to live as one community. But we rebel against God. We hide from our Creator. Ignoring God's commandments, we violate the image of God in others and ourselves, accept lies as truth, exploit neighbor and nature, and threaten death to the planet entrusted to our care. We deserve God's condemnation. Yet God acts with justice and mercy to redeem creation.
And now I would ask if there are any joys or concerns or things that we would like to pray for one with another. I'm sorry? Carol Ganter. Thank you. For Mary and Bob. For Patricia? For Russ Bailey? For our country? Thank you, sir. Yes. For the people of Indonesia, certainly. Uh, prayers for Steph Martin as she is traveling this, uh, this weekend uh, to see her family in Virginia and coming back. Any other things? Well, let's go before God in prayer. We thank you, O oh God, that we have psalms like this morning's that remind us of who you are, remind us of your place in our lives. We ask that we would be those who would be worthy of it, that we would respond in, in faith. And in some ways, we do that by the ways that we love one another, that we love the people who were mentioned here this morning, that we care for them in any way that we can, that we, um, that we check in with them, that, we, that we're present with them. In some ways, it's speaking up and speaking out and, and, and acting in terms of how we can help those in distress. Sometimes it means figuring out what does it mean to be a patriot. What does it mean to love this place the way that you love this place? What does it mean to love each other the way that you instruct us to love each other? What does that mean for us? But in all these things, we know that we are not alone. Because we look up to the hills and we see where our help comes. So keep our heads up. Keep our eyes open. Keep our feet on solid ground. And keep us moving forward towards that holy place. And as we do so, we will remember the ways that you taught us to act and to love and to pray. So we pray now the prayer that, that your son Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now if the ushers will please come forward, we'll receive this morning's offer.
We strive to walk towards you, O oh God, with the gifts that we have been given, the gifts within us. We walk towards you and call for help, that we might be those who go out to do the same for others, who ensure that their lives are kept, and that we are those as the church who provide for that help, who point towards you. Let us love one another as you have called us to love. We thank you for all that we have. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Before I give the benediction, if you are in need of a, a, an ear or just someone to speak with, uh, Gene will be up here as a, a Stephen minister to hear with you, to speak with you, or to provide any, any assistance that you need. My friends, we are those who are called to leave this place and continue to be the church. The pilgrimage that you and I are on may not be to Jerusalem this week. But it is to our places of work, it's to school, it's to, to uh, the places we reside, it's the, the grocery store trips and the countless soccer games and everything in between. You and I are on a pilgrimage together as those who are called to be the church in the world. That is a hefty task. It comes with challenges. It comes with trying to understand what do I do when I see harm in front of me and what do I do when I am the one who is being harmed? These are challenging things. And certainly I don't have all the answers. But I do know that as I lift my eyes to the hills, I seek the one who is awake and ready at my right hand. Who wants to face those challenges with me. And who calls me to be something more. And so in that, I know that I never do these things alone. So I go forward with the faith and the love and the compassion and the awareness of the one who creates me and redeems me and abides with me. 
now and always. Amen.